Well, here's an old saw. It's the same old hack they're always doing. Uh, look at this article here. A biologist chases storms to study spider evolution in Florida, and the storms they're talking about are hurricanes. And they say here the anal lizards, uh, surviving annals, tend to have bigger toe pads than usual, which might give them a better grip in high winds. Yep, the uh, lizards all have different size toe pads uh, in the population, but the ones that survived the hurricanes, they're thinking, are the ones that have toe pads that are bigger, they give them better grip, they can hang on and not get blown into a tree or a brick wall or something uh, when they're turned loose by the wind. Now, that makes perfect sense because that is actually true that natural selection survival of the fittest. The fit do survive better. I mean, that would be true whether Darwin was totally wrong or whether he was right. It doesn't matter. Natural selection has zero to do with whether evolution is true. They're riding piggyback on something that's observable, testable, repeatable, provable, falsifiable. They're riding piggyback on something that is science. And then they lump onto, oh, and by the way, that's what evolution is. Uh, uh, don't look at my ID really fast. You know, I'm really a cop, you know. Uh, <clears throat> that's a lie. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to tell you, it's a lie. And so they do this thing with the spiders too. They say that uh, the uh, spiders here, uh, re aggressive colonies of spiders tend to survive better after a hurricane. Well, uh, yeah, they may tend to survive better. Uh, they also reproduce better. Well, the more aggressive ones uh, reproduced better uh, even though the uh, uh, less and more aggressive ones died the same rate during the storm, after the storm, the surviving colonies were more likely, uh, aggressive survivors were more likely to have more offspring. This is just differential reproduction because of being more fit, because of being more fit after a storm, after a situation like that. Uh, it's another thing evolutionists try to make as a part of their theory, that evolution is only differential reproduction. Uh, some things reproduce more than others and that that causes evolution. You know, that would happen whether evolution and Darwin's evolution was true or not also, uh, just because a group are healthier. Look, for evolution to happen, for evolution in a Darwin sense, particles to people, monkeys to people, fish uh, to uh, amphibians, fish to T-Rexes and, and condors and people, for that part of their theory to work, you have to have new DNA, new genes with new traits being formed in every single one of these things. And all lizards, uh, the little spiders, finch beaks, bacteria being resistant to, to antibiotic drugs, um, all of these things. M peppered moths, moths being black, more black moths in the next generation. All of that is natural selection. And as zero value in proving evolution, unless you just want to put a little equal sign between uh, na the word natural selection and evolution, which is illegitimate. And I'm sorry, these people are probably not liars, but they're being lied to by somebody. And I think if you trace it all the way back, yeah, it's the devil, because he likes tricking people who think they're smart. And he delights in ruining the intelligence of humans and showing them off to be fools, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and their foolish heart was darkened. Well, look, natural selection examples just have zero value in proving that evolution is true, and yet they are touted as the triumphs of evidence, proof even, that Darwin is right and anyone else who disagrees is an idiot in all the textbooks on all levels of education. Don't be fooled, follow Bob Marley little his advice, he said, don't let them try to fool you or even try to school you. You keep thinking, Dr. J.